This is how to play Blackbird by the Beatles, but this was basically written by Paul McCartney, even though it's credited as a Lennon and McCartney song. This is Paul McCartney at one of his greatest moments when it comes to songwriting. Blackbird singing in the dead half night Take these sunken eyes and learn to see All your life You are only waiting for this moment to be free This song is so influential, this technique of going root note and then the major third is evident in so many modern fingerstyle songs or modern pop songs. James Bay, Hold Back the River. Uses exactly the same technique. Songs by Selena Gomez, Shawn Mendes, and countless songs that end up in the top 10 and top 100 on Spotify use this exact same technique. Paul McCartney claims to have got it from a classical piece that they kind of worked on. And that's when he first came across this kind of melody and bass line going together idea. And that idea is that we're basically going to play the first three notes of the G major scale with the thumb. So the G, A and the B. And then it's the next three notes of the G major scale, but an octave higher, which is the B, C and then D. And in between all of those notes, we're always going to have the open third string, which is just a G note, it's the G string. That is done with the following technique. We pluck together with the thumb and the middle finger. And then with the first finger, it's actually a strum, not a pluck, generally just strumming or picking that first string, but it's a little looser than that. And this was Paul McCartney's unique thing that he brought to this song. I don't claim to know where he learnt it from or that technique, but this is the way that essentially he plays it. And of course, if you've had a go at learning this before, this is probably something that you were able to do. And maybe this bit, I've seen people play numerous different ways. This is my interpretation of it, and this is the way I believe he plays it, but it's always played a little bit differently in different performances when anyone's playing live. But this is what I would recommend. Shout out to Turnstone Guitars as well for lending me this guitar. This is a premium English-made uh, acoustic guitar. And I released a video about this not too long ago. There's a link in the description about that if you want to learn more about this beautiful guitar. So that pattern is pluck down up. Now this is where it's that strumming motion, not really a picking motion. Down up, just on the G, but we can end up hinting at other strings as well. But pluck, middle finger and thumb together. Down, up, thumb, pluck, strum. Pluck, down, up, on the third string only, thumb, middle finger, down strum with the first finger. To be able to do that, it's a really important technique, I think, to have your thumb ahead of your fingers. Don't have them even like this. And don't. This is a, kind of the natural position we'd have with your arm. Think of fingerstyle more like you would see a bass player playing bass with the thumb sticking out, kind of doing this, but like that. And the fingers almost pointing downwards, you get a far better tone, no matter what your guitar is or what style you want to play. And the only thing to check is when you're looking down, just make sure your thumb is ahead of your fingers, not behind like this, it wants to be ahead. So we have got that slight kink of the wrist, but super relaxed. Pluck, down, up, thumb, middle, down. So of course you're going to have to practice this in sections, kind of get this going. And then working on these sections kind of separate. And then working on this section separate as well. But that pattern 
is there as well. Now remember with this, I've said that we can sometimes strum just the third string with the first finger, and sometimes we can catch string two as well, which gives us, rather than, it gives us this. That's where we get that little kind of up strum. And that's where Paul starts to vary it when he's played it on the original recording to the many different times he's performed it live in the past. There's varying degrees of that. So just watch some live recording, see which is your preference, have a play with it and see how you want to play it. So a recap of that intro. Then we're up to this section, which the bass just steps up a semitone at a time from the third fret to fret seven. So three, four, five, six, seven. But we're gonna play that with the first finger and then middle finger. And then we've got this higher major third happening to begin with, but then we switch to string six. Now a great warm-up for this is actually doing this, which is one of my wa recommended warm-ups in my intermediate course. That just gets us used to switching from one direction to the other. You can do it on the thinner strings. If you're like, wow, I've never done that kind of thing before, that's a perfect exercise for you. Just lining up four fingers in a row and then going four fingers the other way. Do that for about a week. You should be able to, you know, just five minutes a day for a week, for example. Every time you practice this song, you should be a lot further along the line. So there's number one. Number two, move that up by two frets, fifth fret and seventh fret. And it's the same move. In between each of those, like the very first chords that we play, or notes that we play, we just play a down pick of the third string again. Always just the third string uh, when we're doing a single note, when we're not doing the strumming bit. Then we come back to this pattern, uh, seventh fret and eighth fret. It's basically an E minor chord. Moving that first finger down one fret. It's the reverse of the way we came up after that. There, that's the exact way we came up. Which is why, as I say, this exercise is super useful. goes down to essentially that was a C major chord to a C minor chord, B minor chord, A7 or A chord, D7 and back to G. So from here, we're just walking down one fret at a time as soon as we go to the minor, walk it down one fret, that's why I think, so that was one fret at a time, all on string two. Just watch that second string this time. So from the highest part, just those chords again, and finger positions. Five and seven, four and three. I'm going to play that in its entirety from the top, but I'm going to take out the strumming section so you just kind of see the pluck and I'm not going to repeat any plucking. So we're going to do this. And 
that's how I recommend you practice it while you're still learning the notes. When you're trying to work on that picking style, it needs to be worked on separate here. And then here as well. And then of course it just steps up and down. So even just walking from here is one section to practice. So even just getting to that first bit up to speed is one thing to work on doing this. That's the isolation as well, work on it in isolation. And then do the strumming in isolation. Take a break, give yourself that thinking time. Walk it down. Then we move on to the middle eight section or kind of the middle five section, because it's only five bars long. It can also be good to think of this as section B and everything else we've covered so far as section A, so we get more of a structure of kind of A, A, B, A, and then it sort of repeats from there. This section actually starts from the F, and it's this section. Now for this section I think it's really helpful to know the difference between this shape and this shape. This shape is a major shape, so that's root note a major third. This shape is the minor third, so it's a minor chord shape. And we only need those two notes to give us all the information of a chord. To be able to play this section, first of all learn the root note that we're going from the eighth fret, then down every dot down to the first. So eighth fret, seven, five, three, one. All the dots and just starting and ending at eight and going down to one. And then it's major, minor, minor, major, major. Really easy thing to remember. Major, minor, minor, major. Which is actually the same way that we would walk up a major scale diatonic chords wise. So quite easy to remember. Major, minor, minor, major, major. And then all of that is in the same pattern as we've done already. And then when we get down to the first fret, which is a B flat chord, we do that pattern and move it up to third fret, do the same pattern again. Then ending the same as we do after the ending there, so in context. After that, there's a little repetition. After you're only waiting for this moment to arrive. This is out a little chords, but it's basically the same move as before. Think about it as a C major chord, B minor, A major, D7, and G. So third fret and fifth, second and third, open and second, open and one, and then third and zero. You were only waiting for this moment to arrive And that's all sections of this song. Let me do a little cover of this song just to show you how I would play and sing it. Um, it's not easy to do both of those things at the same time, but I just want to show you how I would cover this song. And of course, check out all the live versions of Paul McCart doing it, of which there are many on YouTube. And have fun learning this wonderful song, like one of my favourite songs ever and one of the greatest songs ever. Blackbird singing in the dead of night Take these broken wings and learn to fly All your life You were only 
waiting for this moment to arrive Blackbird singing in the dead half night Take these sunken eyes and learn to see All your life You are only waiting for this moment to be free Blackbird fly Blackbird fly Into the light of the dark black night Blackbird singing in the dead of night Take these broken wings and learn to fly All your life You're only waiting for this moment to arrive You're only waiting for this moment to arrive